the good news of Jesus Christ, according to the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I had been a youth director for just a matter of months, really, when on the morning of April 20th, 1999, a phone call came into my office. I was busy doing something there, answering emails, looking at phone messages. The phone call came from Sarah's mom. Sarah's mom was asking me if I knew where she was. Or how she was. A very unusual call. It was a weekday. She had to be at school. I didn't understand what was going on. And, and I told her I had no news or no idea. And I asked her what it was. And she said, well, the kids talk with one another and they talk with you. I thought you might know or you might have heard something. And I said, what is this all about? And she said, Tony, Right now, there's a shooting going on at Columbine High School. I wasn't ready for that. I was shocked. From where I was sitting in my office, <laughs> overlooking the Rocky Mountains there in South Denver, just so many miles away, kids were being terrorized. Lives were being lost, it blew my mind. It was more than I could take in and process at that time. And so I said to Sarah's mother, if I hear anything or if I find out anything, I'll let you know. And so we hung up and I started calling around trying to find out anything at that time. It wasn't as easy as it might be these days with cell phones and texting. I turned on the television in my office the local news had gotten to the scene fairly quickly and you could see the police and SWAT teams and other, a number of law enforcement groups on the scene, kids being run out of the school. The story was still developing. They weren't sure who was hurt or how many or if the two shooters were done yet. I just sat in horror and watched it all. Helpless praying, not knowing what to do. A little later, early in the afternoon, Sarah's mother called, called back that Sarah had been all right. She was in a chemistry lab. As a senior, she was helping the teacher with some ninth graders in his Soon as things started to go down and the noises of shots out in the hallway and in the school had happened, that teacher had presence of mind enough to have the students get down, take cover, hide. They moved file cabinets in front of the door, barricaded themselves in, shut off the light and were as quiet as can be until help arrived. 
after the shooting had stopped, there was this long silence. And finally, a knock on the door. The SWAT team was there to start to settle them down, to bring them out of that trap <laughs> into the daylight, to connect them with their parents. Sarah had survived, but she was not all right. She grieved deeply for what had happened in her own school. She was shocked. She was terrified. She had grown up from elementary into middle school and on into high school with one of the assailants. And in the midst of her tears, I remember her saying time and time again, Dylan, how could you do this? She couldn't understand. This boy that she had known, had played with, had laughed with, had learned with, how that could happen. And that question of hers haunted me. We had a special worship service in the middle of the week following that, just two days after. We needed to get together as a congregation and as a community. People were hurting. They needed to hear good news. They needed to hear God who was with them, God who claimed them, God who loved them, God who was pleased with them. And I'll never forget our senior pastor getting up in front of the congregation and saying that he knew our question was, God, how could you let this happen to us? And then he said, God responds. God responds with, how could you let this happen? That haunted me as well. A few years later, and seminary when I got into a pastoral care class that had to do with death and depression, grief. We had opportunity to do an independent study project, kind of a capstone paper for that particular course. And Sarah's question, Dylan, how could you do this? Bishop Weisenbuehler's question from God, how could you let this happen? That became an opportunity for me to dig into those things a little bit, to learn a little bit more. And there, a few years later, after the event, the diaries of these young men, their own writings had been published for people to see, to find out, to get some kind of insight, to try to get a handle on the craziness and the chaos of that whole situation. And as I looked through those diaries and read what those young men had gone through, there was clearly a series of events in their lives where they became disconnected. Disconnected from their own families, their own friends, and that exclusion from their peer group seemed to be the straw that broke the camel's back. So that sent me into a line of inquiry regarding exclusion and what it does to our own psychology. Jesus is claimed as loved. God expresses God's pleasure in Jesus. And I hope when you hear these words, you're reminded of your own baptism. And as I spoke to our children at the children's message this morning, those words are for us. Jesus is given that gift from God, the gift of grace of God's own love, unconditional. And then he goes out into the wilderness face evil, to face 
in some ways I wish it was as easy as Mark makes it sound. It's just two verses, <laughs> a few lines. He went out into the wilderness and fasted and was tested and it was with the beasts and the angels waited on him and then off he goes. Mark is expedient, doesn't waste words. The other gospels tell us a lot more about just what those temptations are. I'm afraid that our temptation in this current wilderness that we are living in is not quite so easy to pin down. I think it's to do nothing. It's not the temptation to do outright wrong and forsake who we are as loved children of God, but it's a temptation to just stay in neutral, to let it continue. I cannot believe that after Columbine, this is still going on. More frequent and of greater magnitude. For me as a pastor, a congregation, for me as one who came up in youth ministry, I think we have work to do to get this message of love out there. To love our kids. To give them that foundation as best we can and to keep an eye out not just for the ones who are here but to keep an eye out for those who are not for the ones who may already be going down paths of exclusion who may be slipping through the cracks it's pretty obvious to me anyway that in this parkland shooting this young man fell through not just cracks but chasms in his life he was clearly troubled and was, I think, crying out for help in his own way, had lost significant relationships of support in his life. I wish we could have been there. I think we still can. Loving our own kids. Loving their friends. Talking to them about who's in and who's out and maybe those outsiders that they are aware of, the ones that are picked on, who are, who are bullied, who seem to be getting pretty angry and upset, ready to, for this sort of thing to happen again. If we can connect with them, if we can have them among us, singing our songs of praise and love, sending them to Houston on great faith journeys, serving with them in the communities, impressing upon them what God has impressed upon us in our baptism, that we belong, that we matter. That I think we can do as people of God, as a congregation. I know that so many of these things have happened that people have started to say, stop praying and do something about it. It's hard for a pastor to hear. I think praying is doing something about it. But maybe uh, the prayer needs to be for God to get us in gear to do something about it. In these awful, tragic situations, we ask, God, where are you? What are you doing? Where's the help? I think we are the answer to those prayers. I think we are the answer to God's prayers. We, the baptized. Please rise as you are able. And let us pray. God of grace, 
We pray for Alyssa Aldahaf, age 14. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Scott Beagle, age 35, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Martin DeCue Anguiano, age 14, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Nicholas Dorrett, age 17, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Aaron Feiss, age 37, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Jamie Gutenberg, age 14, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Chris Hickson, age 49, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Luke Hoyer, age 15, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Kara Loughran, age 14, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Regina Montalto, age 14, he, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Joaquin Oliver, age 17, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Lina Petty, age 14, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Meadow Pollock, age 18, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Helena Ramsey, age 17, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Alex Schachter, age 14, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Carmen Shentrup, age 16, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Peter Wong, age 15, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, for these people and for all who have died victims of needless violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, for your people, the baptized, send your spirit to help us reach out that your work may be done with our hands so that we might help stem the tide of this evil that we might do what we can here in our own schools, in our own communities, our own areas. And God, we cannot forget those who have done these shootings, how they have fallen through cracks created by us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, help us to always remember we are loved, we are claimed, and you are pleased with us, and may that strengthen us for the hard work ahead. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.